It's been a fantastic year for some amazing fossil finds this year on the Yorkshire coast. In this video, I'm going to go through my top 10 favourite finds of the year. Let's get straight into it. All of my fossil finds come from my local beaches. I spend many, many hours searching, particularly after cliff falls and rough seas, looking for Jurassic treasures. All of the fossils I'm about to show here are from the Jurassic time period and are roughly 180 million years old. I technically found this first fossil quite a number of years ago, however I split the rock and it damaged the fossil somewhat, but I sent it away to Hannah who loves preparing these beautiful lobster fossils over in America and she sent me this stunning claw back. There's actually two claws laid on top of each other but to prepare the second one on the left it might have damaged the really nice first one so we decided to keep it as it is. Find number nine consists of these two articulated pieces of ichthyosaur vertebra. There's three vertebra showing here. I found this one at Sands End. There must have been quite a bit more of a skeleton up in the cliffs at some point. These fossils had very recently, probably in the last night, washed out of a very fresh cliff fall. Here's a much larger but similar specimen that I found at Saltwick Bay. I imagine that there would have been much more of this up in the cliff, perhaps it was either collected by someone else or washed away in the storms that followed. You can see where the rib attachments would have fitted on, on the larger set of verts. Coming in at find number 8 is this awesome nautilus fossil that I found. The species is called Cenoceros nautilus. It was originally a much larger example, but when I found it, it was very battered. So I gave it to my friend Malcolm to see if he could prepare it, and he managed to make it so it's got this awesome stand made of its own outer whirl. I really like how you can take it out and examine the front and the back of a nautilus. It displays absolutely beautifully. I don't think I've seen another one quite prepared in this way, so it's really unique. Find number seven is this monster Pseudoleoceros ammonite. I remember finding it in this nodule and tapping it open to reveal a huge Pseudoleoceros. The special thing about this ammonite is that there's a lovely little Hildoceros ammonite washed into the mouth border of the giant ammonite. It's very rare to get a multi-species display example like this, especially with a 6 inch plus Pseudoleoceros ammonite. The nice thing about Pseudoleoceros ammonites is that they retain much of their shell and it gives them this lovely brown colour. So my dad actually picked up find number 6, he showed me it asking me is it ichthyosaur vertebra. Inside the very warm pebble I managed to prepare these five beautiful ichthyosaur vertebra. While I always enjoy preparing fossilised bone, this particular one was a little bit difficult, not so much of a bone but it was because the matrix had been eaten by modern day sea creatures so there was lots of little holes running all across it and my pen kept slipping inside which was a bit of a nightmare but I'm really pleased with how it came out. All of the ichthyosaur vertebra displayed on this piece are a little bit scattered which I guess tells a little bit of the story from back then. Perhaps it was scavenged but we'll never know. 
another rare ammonite coming in for find number five. I picked it up at Raven Scar and it was in this quite large rock. The ammonite species is called a Horgia, which definitely doesn't occur very often. I think it only really comes from this one spot, at least towards the Whitby area anyway. It's got quite a bit of its original shell and it gives it this nice brown colour, really nice shiny ammonite. My friend Malcolm did this clean preparation job on this ammonite. If you look to the side of the ammonite you can see quite a large worn bivalve shell which just adds to the piece. So here is how I picked up find number 4 on the beach, just a few worn ribs poking out of the top of the rock. I actually prepared this one myself and it took me quite a few hours. It was very hard rock, it was actually quite pyritic even though it doesn't look very pyritic. And I managed to prepare out these huge ribs. I believe the creature is a crocodile but I'm not 100% sure, the ribs are very very large so it could be a very very big crocodile or maybe a plesiosaur there's a number of ammonites washed up against the bones it's certainly an interesting piece some of the bones were washed up at different levels and there's this shiny bone which could be either an eye plate or maybe part of the skull Does anyone know what species of ammonite this one is? Here's how I found find number 3. I almost threw it away but upon closer inspection I noticed a worn tooth on the very top. So very careful preparation job I had to do on this one. I spent quite a few hours on it to reveal the teeth, so I prepared the one on the top and then started digging into the matrix to reveal the three teeth on the side. I tried to keep as much enamel as possible, very very difficult because the enamel flakes off when you pen it, but I'm pleased with the preparation work what I did on this one. Perhaps this piece is the middle section of an ichthyosaur jaw but I'm not sure. Either that or it's just some really nice scattered teeth but I'm very pleased with how it turned out. All fossilised teeth are very rare on the Yorkshire coast and extremely sought after. If you've watched any of my recent videos you'll have probably seen find number two. I actually had to refilm making this whole video because I found it and I definitely wanted to include it in the video. It's an amazing find. Unfortunately it's not prepared yet but I am very excited to get it prepared and I'll definitely be showing it on the channel once it's finished. It's the middle section of a ichthyosaur, very articulated, it will look 3D when prepared. It'll be like looking down at the ichthyosaur from the top. There's a number of bones on the side, including some very thick ribs. Quite a few of the neural arches that connect to the vertebrae are still in place. And on the back there's some very thick bones, possibly from the shoulder. This is an ichthyosaur vertebra looking down from the top. And then there's a few other bones and a very big what I can assume is a shoulder bone. So time for my number one find of the year. It's always been a dream fossil to find a skull and I always imagined it would be an ichthyosaur but no, a crocodile was the first skull I found and a cracking one at that. Full skull, just missing the tip of the snout. Mark Kemp, the Yorkshire fossil hunter, did the beautiful preparation job on this amazing fossil piece. 
There's a number of ammonites washed up into the eye and lots of bivalve shells around the skull. Looking into the eye of a Jurassic crocodile. Here's a few shots of the very back of the skull. It should go without saying, fossilised skulls are extremely rare on the Yorkshire coast, especially when they're preserved like this. A mind-blowing fossil, one I'm super proud to have on my display. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you all on the next one.